Coming up on First at Four, we'll have the latest on a police chase that ended in Laurel County with a dead body discovery. And some students are getting hands-on learning and helping flood victims in Knott County. That was a nice dry break, wasn't it? Well, I hope you enjoyed it because we got more showers and breezy conditions working in. Latest breakdown coming up as Mountain News First at Four starts now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Huntsley. First at four, a bizarre discovery after a police chase and crash in southern Kentucky. Troopers say a chase that started in Madison County ended in Laurel County with a dead woman in the back seat of the driver's car. The crime scene caused a major traffic backup on the busy interstate between Mount Vernon and London. WYMT's Phil Pendleton is live. A very, very crazy series of events that again started just after 10 o'clock this morning, somewhere around the Richmond area. That is when police noticed a driver driving carelessly. They actually got him to stop, but as they tried to apprehend him, he sped off again, leading a chase through Rockcastle County and then into Laurel County. That is when it came to a stop with a crash, but as they approached the vehicle, they noticed a woman's body in the back seat of the car. This chase reached speeds of 100 miles an hour. Police were finally able to get that driver to stop again around the 43 mile marker. Police noticed the dead woman in the back seat. Now her cause and manner of death remains under investigation. Her identity and the identity of the driver has not been released yet. At this time, all that's still under investigation. Uh, we don't know the location of where she passed away at or, or where the crime maybe was committed. Uh, that part is still under investigation. And as this investigation continues, hopefully we'll find that information out. And again, southbound Interstate 75 has since reopened. They reopened about an hour ago, but we were still seeing the impact of traffic here on Highway 25 over here to my right. Uh, the Howell Rogers Parkway here over to my left. That traffic has uh, gone down quite a bit as the interstate has reopened and things are getting back to normal again. But again, it was a major traffic nightmare for a lot of people uh, earlier today. Live in Laurel County, Phil Pendleton, now back to you. All right, Phil, thank you. Certainly a bizarre situation there. The driver was taken into custody. He's said to be from out of state, possibly Florida. Charges against him are pending, and we have also learned again within the last hour that the southbound lanes of the interstate have reopened. So some good news for traffic, but uh, still, as Phil mentioned, could be uh, some traffic in that area just because it was closed for so long. We'll have another, another update from Phil coming up at 530. Well, students in the BAM class at the Knott County ATC are now getting hands-on experience in the community following the flood. The Area Technology Center suffered severe damage in July, losing the tiny home project the class had previously worked on. BAM instructor Teddy Martin says they saw a need in the community and started helping however they could. We had lost our project, and we just started focusing our attention to, you know, just the community to try to see what we could do to help. Uh, it seemed like a better, uh, better use of her time yeah. at, the, at the moment for the circumstances. The students say they have enjoyed getting to help people in the community that truly need it. We'll have more on their current project tonight at 6. Well, continuing to watch an increase in not only the temperatures, not only the rain chances, but the stiff breezes out there as well. In fact, a wind advisory is now in effect for some of our counties in place, especially along and west of Interstate 75 and a few counties there east of the interstate. This runs until 7 o'clock tomorrow night for the potential for winds to gust above 70, or excuse me, 40 miles per hour, above 40 miles per hour with this. We're not there yet, but we are still seeing some warm air. Upper 50s to low 60s region wide, even though the winds are calm at this hour. Notice those temperatures. Middle 60s, Somerset, Manchester, and right into Monticello as well, where we've seen some breaks in the clouds so far today. But some scattered showers already getting going in parts of south central Kentucky and into the bluegrass. We'll continue to watch this 
move into the region. There's the big mess. Tornado watches from Memphis to back down to Baton Rouge, and we'll continue to see everything push off to the east with a plenty of snow in the portions of the upper Midwest there. For us, we're going to watch the potential for some gusty winds. You see that as our first alert weather app continues. Go ahead and download that from the app stores. You'll see not only our very latest forecast, but also our very latest video forecast as well as temperatures bottom out in the late evening and then come back up as we head through the overnight. The details and timing on when the showers and even some storms move in in a few minutes. Steve. All right, Evan, thank you. A disturbing set of Google searches, blood-stained items, and surveillance videos showing a purchase of cleaning supplies. That's just some of the evidence Massachusetts prosecutors laid out today against Brian Walsh, now formally accused of killing his wife and disposing of her body. CNN's Gloria Pasmino has the latest. Brian Walsh, the 47-year-old husband of Anna Walsh, officially charged with the murder of his wife. It's been more than two weeks since the 39-year-old mother of three went missing. Rather than divorce, it is believed that Brian Walsh dismembered Anna Walsh and discarded her body. Brian Walsh stood in the courtroom mostly silent as Massachusetts prosecutors unveiled chilling evidence against him, including disturbing Google searches he allegedly made on his son's iPad. On January 1st, he searched how long before a body starts to smell. At 4.58 a.m., how to stop a body from decomposing. At 5.20 a.m., he searched how to embalm a body. At 5.47 a.m., 10 ways to dispose, dispose of a dead body if you really need to. Investigators discovered evidence across different locations. A COVID-19 vaccine card in the name of Anna Walsh, a hacksaw, a hatchet, and some cutting shears. Prosecutors say state lab tests show Anna and Brian's DNA were found on some of the items. Walsh pleaded not guilty and is being held without bail. His defense attorney releasing a statement that says in part, it is easy to charge a crime and even easier to say a person committed that crime. It is a much more difficult thing to prove it. I'm Gloria Pasmino reporting. Well, former President Trump's campaign wants his Facebook account back. The campaign made the request to Facebook's parent company, Meta, yesterday. Trump's Facebook and Twitter accounts were blocked after thousands of angry Trump supporters violently attacked the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021. Twitter, under the leadership of Elon Musk, has already restored the former president's Twitter. Facebook had initially said Trump's ban from the site would be indefinite. However, the company announced in June 2021 that his ban would be reassessed in January 2023, which of course is now. A uh, specially formed internal group at Meta is said to be currently weighing the decision whether to allow Trump back on Facebook and Instagram. A Meta spokesperson says they will make an announcement in the coming weeks. Coming up on First at Four, a water crisis is developing in a small town in Arizona that just lost its only reliable source of water. Plus, showers are back as we head into tonight and tomorrow, followed by some more seasonable weather. Break down on that coming up after this.